quite frankly, good, good afternoon, President uh, Obama. I am deeply honored to finally be in this forum and so grateful for CNBC making the forum available so that you can speak to American citizens just like myself. Well, um, I am a chief financial officer for a veteran service organization, AMBETS, here in Washington. I'm also a mother. I'm a wife. I'm an American veteran, and I'm one of your middle-class Americans. And quite frankly, I'm exhausted. I, I'm exhausted of defending you, defending your administration, right. defending the mantle of change that I voted for, right. and deeply disappointed with where we are right now. I, I've been told that I voted for a man who said he was going to change things in a meaningful way for the middle class. I'm one of those people, and I'm waiting, sir. I, I'm waiting. I, I don't feel it yet. And I thought, well, it wouldn't be... A in this video, I would like to discuss black hate, black pride, as it relates to the allegiance that we have had for so long to the Democratic Party. Ain't no free world, ain't no such thing as a world where there's going to be uh, a place where there's no more haves and have nots. That's an illusion that's presented in a socialist format that's just never been true, not going to be true, never will be true. That someone's going to give you a world where you can get stuff for free. There's no such thing. Never will be. But they'll play the card to get you to go for their system. And once they get their crap in place, you're going to lose freedoms you never knew you had. Just think about it. Either way, whatever you decide, I'm just saying, think about it. You have to decide what you want out of life and what you believe represents truth, whatever that is. Hey, y'all. Okay, so I'm sitting up looking at my TV, and I'm disturbed by what I see. Okay. Okay, now you got everybody all upset because now people are talking about deporting illegal immigrants back to their country. Okay. When they came here... Illegally. And see, now you have the president done weighed in, in on it. Okay. And he said, it's not who we are as Americans. Okay. And I say, no, Mr. President, it's not who you are as an American. That's right. We as Americans want our border secure. That's right. Where we can feel safe in our country. Uh -huh. We as Americans want our jobs back here in our country. Right. Where we can thrive again. That's right. We as Americans, baby, want to know that we matter first uh -huh. before uh -huh. outsiders. So charity starts at home. Right. Okay. Yeah. We as Americans want our government to realize yeah. that it's easier and cheaper for you to deport yeah. instead of support, That's okay? Right. All right? Now, I know that we're the land of the free, yeah. but it doesn't mean for people to come over here yeah. in our country illegally right. and get free food, free housing, housing. free education, education, free medical. medical. It doesn't mean that. Don't mean Illegal that. immigration, you all, is wrong. It is wrong, wrong. in this country. Mm -hmm. So, I had an opportunity. Donald Trump came to Tucson, Arizona, where I live. And uh, came and did a rally here, and I had an opportunity to go, so I went. Uh, some people probably would disagree with that, but, you know, the Lord on my side, so I'm okay with, with going there because I know I'll be all right. Went in there, very, very shocking. I, I, I wasn't expecting what I saw. I had no idea that I was going to leave that event with the thought process and experience that I obtained. I, I just had no idea. It started from the beginning. Went to the uh, walking in the line, waiting to get in. Uh, saw a couple of people peacefully protesting. They had signs up. You know, it actually gave me an opportunity to read the signs. I looked at them. I took pictures of them. Um, I was able to see their point of view. When you get closer to the door, I couldn't take pictures. I couldn't do video because they were pushing us through because people were verbally violent at the door, yelling, saying, F Donald Trump. I mean, being outrageous. Um, a very, very uncomfortable feeling. I mean, people are directly yelling at me as if I'm a criminal and all I'm trying to do is just hear what the man have to say. I, I didn't wear anything supporting Donald Trump. I was very neutral with this black shirt and khakis on. When I got inside, you know, it was peaceful. Initially, the, you know, the shocking thing is, is that, that everybody seemed to be peaceful. There wasn't a lot of hatred and, and, and maliciousness going on and, and lashing out at the protesters. I, initially, there was nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get that impression at all. Um, when, it, but the, the, the thing that stood out to me was these protesters. I mean, from the door, and then some of them snuck inside. And a funny thing that I don't know, the media don't cover this, but 
Donald Trump actually paid for to rent that facility to make it a private event. Therefore, by law, he reserved the right to keep people out at his discretion. Um, so he's not violating constitutional rights when he was kicking people out. And I can say this point blank, that he didn't randomly kick people out. Um, a lot of times it wasn't really him that was even addressing these people. Before he ever came out, they made an announcement and said, you are not to harm protesters, you are not to get in a physical altercation with them, um, that the security staff will escort them out. And that was another thing that I didn't see portrayed, I don't see portrayed in the media, is that they gave a disclaimer and said, don't hurt these people, you, you don't need to do this. Um, so move why would you why would you support a racist? He's going to send you back to Africa. That's what he said. Oh, what he said send Mexicans back to Mexico. And these protesters were extremely crazy. And of course, when they walked them out, they putting their hands up and acting like they're they're getting drugged or something. These people were re really acting a fool. So, I mean, they were acting up so much. There was people in the crowd yelling at the police to tell them to go do something. And you know, these people don't understand that, yeah, all the cops run up over there and then they leave this whole bottom part open. I mean, what are you going to do? And you know for a fact they'll be on CNN if they get to pulling on somebody too hard because they only going to capture the, 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 second pa the second half of it. They're not going to capture the first part where the person's spitting and yelling, up, yelling in people's faces. So um, I think the officers did a great question. Yeah, you ask our question. What has he said? He said send Mexicans back to Mexico. No, he said he said don't Mexico. let Muslims here. Yeah, he said why? He's are you gonna let why? me talk or are you gonna you, yell? No, I'm telling you because oh, you, you oh, yeah, holding this yell. Trump flag and you so need to be talking. We can't conversation, can we? We cannot do that. It makes no sense. And this is how I want to talk about how the white liberal media and uh, Democrats are destroying blacks. At one point in history, the Democrats decided we need the black vote, and the best way to get the black vote is to give them stuff and make them be dependent upon the government. What people don't understand is there's a difference, well, some people don't understand. There's a difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. Now, blacks tend to think that the Republicans are racist because they say, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, do it your damn self without the government's help. But I want to explain to you how that's actually not racist. That's actually common sense. And it shows you that the Republicans have a little bit more respect, not for you, but for what you can do as an individual than the Democrats do. See, the Democrats are treating black people like they're little children, and I call them retarded children. See, retarded children, you do not believe that they'll be able to do for you themselves. You do not believe that they will be able to function outside of your support. The Democrats also believe in big government. The Democrats believe in bureaucracy. In order to have bureaucracy, you have to have people who need the government. The Republicans believe in smaller government. In order to have smaller government, you have to have less people who need the government. By logic, the Republicans want to have fewer people looking at the government to bail them out of situations that they could bail themselves out of. The Democrats want more people looking for the government to bail them, bail them out of situations that they should be able to bail themselves out of. What does that tell you, black people? What does that tell you your liberal friends and your democratic friends think about you when every time an election season come up, they just offer you something that technically they don't even have to deliver on. You don't see this on front page news, but you got Milwaukee, Black Panther leader, shooting president, whatever. African-American male. Check him out. Officer. And the city was being burned down in certain parts of the black community by protesters. So Donald Trump decided to go to Milwaukee and speak about the conditions of America and why he felt black people should vote for him. He even went on to give lay out reasons why he felt we should. Let me say this to the brothers and sisters who listened and watched that speech. We may not like the vessel that said what he said, but I ask us to truly examine what he said because it is a fact that for 54 years, we have been voting for the Democratic Party like no other race in America and they have not given us the same loyalty and love that we have given them. We as black people have to re-examine the relationship I agree. where we're being pimped like prostitutes 
and they're the big pimps pimping us politically, promising us everything, and we get nothing in return. We got to step back now as black people and say we got to look at all the parties and vote our best interest. Look, I, I couldn't. I, and then this here, I never thought I would see the day that someone like uh, Rush Limbaugh, Louis Farrakhan were rooting for the same guy. But again, I'll finish with, check this out. Mr. Uh, Trump said, um, we can't uh, allow these Muslims refugees into America. Now, a lot of people were upset with him, but I know, um, sir, that the hatred for America in the Muslim world is building, as we told Mr. Bush, no Muslim leader could call for jihad and have it stick. No Muslim leader had the power to unite the whole Muslim world. I said, but America's policies will unite those people against the West, and it is happening. So in this way, Mr. Trump, I think, is wise to vet anyone coming from that area into America because the hatred for America is in the streets now. So if those people are refugees and America feels I got to let 10,000 of them in because America created the problem. Now, if you let them in and you don't vet them carefully, you might be letting in your own destruction. When we dialogue, we correct misperceptions. That is what makes Trump acceptable to so many white people who feel, damn, I can't be myself now. I can't say what I really feel, I'll pay a political price. So Mr. Trump says, to heck with that. I'll tell you what's on my mind. And that is freeing a lot of people that like what he is doing. So the politicians today, I, I looked at the many Republicans and Democrats that are trying to win the nomination of their party. And it says to me, you know, it's like a, I don't want to be vulgar, but it's like you, in any major city, you see women undressed, showing their wares for a John to buy them. And it's like politicians who don't have money but have ideas and they parade themselves before rich and powerful people to get money apparently for their ideas that the rich agree with but the moment that they become what they're looking to become they find that the rich have an agenda for them that the rich have something to ask of them like the John asks of the prostitute. And that's one of the things that I admire about Mr. Trump because he told them all, I don't want your money. And when a politician does not want money from the rich, he's freer than the others to really do good for the masses of the people. And I think that today uh, we are in the midst of the darkest hour in American history. And so if we don't make the right move with the right people at the right time, the America that we know, we're not going to see it become great again. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. I don't believe he brought me this.
this far to leave me. We must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred.